Hello everyone, welcome to another video with Cas on the Mesuma channel. And today I'm gonna teach you how to build a memory device so that you can build machines in Minecraft. So guys, today I have something a little bit out of the usual, but once again, what is usual on a channel where you have farms and piston doors and survival and minigames and uh, whatever crosses my mind. So uh, this time I designed a little device that I'm going to be using in on some of my next projects, uh, on my ongoing projects and future projects, and I think it could be useful to you guys. I haven't explored all the features of this, but uh, for the things I've seen so far, I think it's pretty amazing and really worth sharing uh, at the point it is already now. So it's a memory device, it lets you store a bunch of things and it will kind of manage itself just like a Q or FIFO uh, if, you're gonna, if you want to go technical. So let me do a quick demonstration. Okay, let's go ahead and store our first number. So this is why I have this panel here. I want to store the number 10. And if you look back there, the information is propagating forward and eventually it stops here. And if we count here, it's 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So it's a 10 uh, right here. Let's now store nine and check this out. And it stopped there. So you have a 10 right there and a nine right next to it. So let's store the whole sequence. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And all of those are stored now, exactly. Uh, and if I, if I want to store anything else, like let's try to store a seven, say, it won't go because the queue is uh, completely full, so it doesn't go. And let's look at some of the benefits of this. So the memory, the memory thing is the science circuit here. This is the main part and it's very compact very confusing and very smart and very everything. I don't know. I just love this little circuit here. Uh, the ugly pumpkin thing here, those are jack-o'-lanterns I'm using here just to reduce light updates for, the re for recording the video. Uh, the brown line is a reset line that I will show you guys a little bit later. And uh, this is basically showing you that you can read from this device from anywhere. So if you get serial information, you can store using the, the queue, but you can read everything in parallel, just, just like you see here. Or if you don't want to do that, you can read this. So I'm reading a 10 here, and if I press this button, now I'm reading the next number, and you can see the queue moving. So I've removed the first item here. You can see that we have a nine here. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And the first slot is now free. And if I wanted to store that seven I mentioned before, I can. And it's there, it's already there. So I can keep pulsing this thing and bringing the other items here. So or values, data values, I mean. Uh, I can give it a fast pulse. Let me just uh, generate a quick pulse here. I was unprepared for that because I just got this idea, uh, but I, I need you to, to remember to show you this. So you can, you can read using signals as fast as two tick pulses and it's all fine. It's decreasing the value. I can uh, use this memory device to encode information to whatever I want and it's really easy to to use really easy to manage as you can see all the units uh, will manage themselves and I also included a reset button here uh, to click quickly clear everything so now it's ready to use again I stored a new predictable sequence here so it's one two three four five. wait this is not a four Oh my god, what, what can I do about it? <laughs> uh, of course, I just uh, made this mistake to show you guys that you can actually delete items from the queue. So I can delete this number three here just by input a strong signal here. And uh, the queue should fix itself. So it goes uh, up to four, five and six. And let's see if I delete this. You can see four is already here, five and six followed. Okay, so I broke the reset line so that it, it won't propagate reset <laughs> uh, when I try to change this. And look, this has a value of four and I connected this blue line uh, with signal strength on it. And if I give it a two tick pulse, I mean, if I give this one a two tick pulse, the four disappears. 
and then again it appears so it is a t flip flop uh, that will also keep the stored the signal strength and you can uh, make it disappear as well again and appear with a new value so the t flip flop will also switch to new signal strength values depending on uh, where you give it the input as long as you do it using uh, a two tick pulse so disappear and switch back on isn't this amazing isn't this absolutely amazing guys so there you have it guys a memory array that will manage itself as a rearranging itself as a queue automatically it doesn't use any torches and it's too, too tall uh, which means you can stack another unit or another array of units right on top uh, of the the previous one and expand it to whatever size you want it's very easy to read very easy to write very easy to reset very compact and uh, I, I i can't tell enough advantages of this but there are some some downsides to this first it uses comparators so uh, the, the signal transmission is not super fast you input something here and it's going to take ages to get to the other side if the queue is too big but if it's a little bit full it won't take too, too long for this thing to update and store your information i mean it's it's a good price to, a good price to pay i, I would say uh, and also you see the values here from 15 down to one so where is zero and this is a downside with this and and what makes this a non fully featured uh, hexadecimal memory array you can store 15 uh, strength uh, different strength values inside each cell but not 16 uh, which means you cannot do four bit calculations using this but you can do three bits and even more even more um, say i want to store pi there's there's some other systems you can use uh, let's first clear everything so you guys should be familiar with this sequence so it's three starts with three the, the pi okay so it's one four but i have one four right here and i can store this using one digit also the next digits the next two digits are one and five so i would store those two digits would using only half the space um, but if i want to keep uh, the decimal system then i would stick to those so one five i think i can remember up to nine two six five three and five and this is uh this is all i remember from pi it doesn't even fit here the, the, the last five doesn't fit here um i'm curious now how, how many digits of pi can you guys remember this is this is as much as i remember uh and okay if i if i if i stop here and you pause the video you can already copy the array maybe this is a more convenient position for you to to copy this but i uh, will uh, do a tutorial now on it and show you guys how to build how to build this thing because i want to explain how it works because then you guys can learn something or maybe even improve this design okay let's start learning how the system works so the first part is known by a lot of people and it's a kind of memory device so any kind of signal strength you input here it's going to lock inside this this little device and then you have to use a repeater and set this on subtraction mode so that you can reset it and then you can use a comparator to to power this again using a different signal strength so what a lot of people don't know is that you can actually power this thing using the same signal so uh usually people will send a signal to reset the cell and later on send a new signal here but actually you can send both sig both signals at the same time uh, because the because of the update order what you can't do in my experience is something like this you cannot have the comparator powering the redstone dust and then the repeater cannot change places because it needs to to kill the signal from uh, the comparator the, but the comparator uh, needs to go in a block for this thing to work and 
let's see if if I place this now you can I can press F3 and you can look to the right side of the screen and see that it's importing the system with a signal strength of 14 and if we look here it's uh, it's 14 already and uh, the difference with the system is that it resets it so that you can input a smaller value because if the signal strength is too high here uh, it, it will ignore uh, lower signal strengths but then here let's check this is a 11 and now the cell is also 11 so that was trick number one trick number two is how the cube works so it gets a input from the other cell from here because remember uh, this little dot here where the memory is is going to connect exactly here so that information from the the next cell is going right into this cell so we need to prevent that so we set all of those in subtraction mode and create a lock here using a repeater and redstone dust here so this cell will not lock anything at this moment but once i build a second cell will guys will understand okay i marked the division between the cells the virtual division between them so that you guys don't get confused here just look at the yellow blocks and you know where something starts and something else begins okay so the input is supposed to be uh back there uh on the other cells and this is going is supposed to be the output although i did show you guys that you can you can mess with the order uh, in which the the cell do does things so once i give it a signal strength this guy is going to populate this uh, memory cell with this signal strength it will reset it using the repeater and then populate the memory uh, at the same time it will spread the signal using the red line here and also populate this other cell and what this cell will do just like this other one is it will get the signal strength and then use this repeater to lock its own input so that this cell cannot give this guy anything else but here's the magic we use this repeater here on and it's a little detailed that it has to be on three ticks can also be on four but needs to be on three ticks and what it does is it will clear this cell because remember the repeater is the reset sign for the for the comparator so it happens in that order it gets a new signal strength sends the signal strength to the next cell the next cell locks itself here but not before it clears the cell before it next time we input something here the signal strength will once again populate the memory but because those are locked uh, from the previous input the signal is not going to spread here so effectively you're going to store both values and this is not going to propagate so uh, this is the downside of this again that we can't store zero because zero is a control value for this memory it uses zero to, to trigger uh, the, the spreading mechanism and act like a virus to destroy the world no uh, i mean okay let's store something let's store something um this is ah oh, by the way you should give it short signals like two tick pulses is ideal uh this is a nine okay so let's check in here because <laughs> i messed up there but as you can see here it is a nine as well and because I, I held the signal for too long it's also a nine here so i will have to reset it but it's good that i'm that i'm showing you guys some of the possible problems that you can find if you don't set uh, the proper uh, post length for this thing okay so let's give this a nine again but only using a short signal and you can see we also we have the nine here and we got nothing here because the signal propagated here and this cell cleared the previous one and now let's give it another signal uh, like this and as you can see now we have a 14 here and oops this is a locking system and a nine here uh, the nine is preserved and if i power this guy here momentarily uh, we now have the 14 that was previously on the other cell and this cell is now empty because it copied information from this non-existent cell that was obviously empty and this is how it all works 
And now I guess I shared everything I know from this system. Uh, it's pretty cool, pretty crazy. I bet you guys are going to have a lot of fun trying to figure out crazy things to do with this. If you are into computers, mini games, uh, which is mostly what I use those things for, uh, this is going to be a extremely useful device for you. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Uh, don't forget to leave some feedback in the comments. Uh, and well, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.